Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. He has risen, amen. God has risen, he's risen, he's risen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. My God, my God, my God. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God, I just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, I lift you up in the name of Jesus. I praise your holy name and I thank you for such a wonderful, beautiful Sunday. In the name of Jesus, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And I lift you up. I'm so joyful to be in your presence on today. In the name of Jesus. Just because of what today represents. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're almighty and you're powerful. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. He is Lord, He is Lord, hallelujah. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Messiah, the Lord, the risen Savior, Jesus Almighty, the Son of God up above. He has risen from the dead. This day represents the day of resurrection, the day that Jesus has raised up out the grave. Okay, and Jesus is doing something on today. He had me get up this morning and he told me to get dressed like you're going to church and get up and do church in your house. Set up an altar and do some church. So I'm doing it. I'm being obedient to the spirit of the Lord. Put in my son that he is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every time I go to sleep, every time I go to sleep for the last two weeks, God keeps telling me, 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Why is God telling me this? God is telling me this because right now at this particular day and time, he's saying that until every knee bow and every tongue confess and say and declare and speak out their mouth, speak forth out of their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, this is going to linger. It will go away, you guys. It will go away. But it's lingering until every knee bow and every tongue confess and say, God is real. Nobody can take us out of this but God. If you look at your surroundings and you look at your situations, you see that even in the hospitals, right now with this whole con con corona pandemic, even the doctors are saying, go home and pray. Stay in the hospital and pray. I have no medicine. There's no more medicine. There's no more oxygen. There's no more this. There's no more that. All you can do is pray. And people are at a time where all they can do is bow down, get on their knees and pray and say, God, there's nothing else I can do. I lift my hands. I throw my hands up and I'm praying to you. This is why God is saying every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. People are falling on the, on the right side. They're falling on the left. They're falling by the waist. They're dropping dead like flies, literally like flies. But what God is saying is, all I want you to do is go into your secret place. Stay inside your homes, okay? During this quarantine, stay in your homes. Go somewhere. Go in your closet. Go into your bathroom. Go somewhere and just profess unto me all your sins. Tell me everything that is bothering you. He said, my yoke is light, okay? I will lift off your burdens. All I want you to do is just come to me in your time of need. You're losing your family members. You're losing some people are losing their parents. Some people are losing their sisters, their brothers, their kids due to this situation, this pandemic. But God is saying that I've risen from the dead and I am Lord. I've risen a long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago. And all I want you to do is to go into your secret place and bow down and confess that I am Christ. I am your risen Savior and I am your Lord on today. Today represents Easter, okay? Yes, it's just a holiday. It is, truly. But it represents the day that the Lord has risen. And there's many people crying out today, asking God for a miracle, asking God to do something different in their life. But what he's saying is, just bow down. Bow down unto me, not the other idols. Bow down. Bow down. And I will raise you up in me. The same way I raised up from the dead, I will raise you up. Call me into your life and I will restore you and waken you and say, okay, now you have life eternally. You will live forever and ever in me through Christ Jesus. But all he wants you to do is just bow down, fall on your face and say, God, I give up. I'm tired. I can't do this by myself. But I know you risen and you are the Savior and you can do it. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing on today in the name of Jesus. You're worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. God is saying on today that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said he has died on the cross for your sins. And he said when he laid up on that cross, okay, with his arms held out, when he laid up on that cross with his feet bounded up and his head laid back, he said to his father above, it is finished. When Jesus said it was finished, he said it was finished for a reason. He was done. He took all your burdens. He took all your your sins, all your iniquities, all your generational curses, everything that you went through, God said, Father, I'm done. It's finished. So all he's saying to you, if you guys want this situation to be finished, us all, everybody, the church, the people, me, everybody, if you want it to be finished, just bow down. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He wants the nations to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. I died. I went to the cross. I put my hands up and I told my Father, it is finished. That's what Jesus did. It is finished. He said it's finished. When Jesus said it was finished, everything was finished with it. When you died, you rose back up again in Christ because it was finished. He paid the, he paid the price at Calvary for us. Everything was done. Everything still is done. God said, he told me to go to Psalms 91. This is for the people of God. And this is for the people who are waking up in Christ. This is what he's saying in this time of need, right? This is what thus says the Lord, okay? Psalms 91, chapter 91, amen? The Bible says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he will rest in the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, amen? In whom I trust 
Surely he will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence, you guys. What's going on right now, the deadly pestilence. He will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge, amen? You will be safe under him, under his wings. You will be safe under the arms of the Almighty, amen? Hallelujah, my God, my God, my God. His faithfulness, you will be shielded. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day. My God, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. The pestilence, everything that is around the spiritual things that we are not aware of. The people of God who are spiritually blinded. The people in the world who are spiritually blinded. See, let me tell you something. You cannot understand the spirit unless you operate in the spirit. If you understand the flesh, it's because you're operating in the flesh, okay? We have to have the spiritual eyes to see the spirit and live in the flesh and see the flesh and be able to differentiate what is of the spirit and what is of the flesh. How can we fight the spirit with the spirit and how can we fight the flesh with the flesh? This is what God is saying. So there is a darkness surrounding people. There's a big cloud, an overwhelming cloud over everybody, over all the nations right now. And this cloud is a representational for the spirit of death, okay? The cloud of death, the shadows of death. And it's lurking all around. It's lurking everywhere. And the problem is right now is that we need to be reading the Psalms 91 where we can go under the wings and under the hands of Father Almighty where he can touch us, he can shelter us, he can take us to refuge, he can hold us like this and protect us in this storm, in this spiritual storm of darkness that is going on right now. Psalms 91 is something we should be reading on a daily basis, amen? Psalms 91, my God, my God. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday, nor the plague that destroys at midday. This thing is going about morning, noon, night, all hours of the day. This thing is continuous. It's going on and on and on. And God is speaking about this right now. Okay? It says, nor the plagues that go on by midday, amen? A thousand may fall at your side. Oh my God. Ten thousand at your right side. But it will not come near you. People of God, it will not come near you. My God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It will not come near you, my God. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. You will only see. You will see. You, you, you'll be in the midst, my God. You will be in the midst, hallelujah. But you, you won't be touched. You won't be harmed. You will be in the midst of it. You will see the death everywhere. 10,000 by your right side, 1,000 here. You'll see it, but you shall not be touched. It will scare you. Physically and even spiritually, said, My God, some things that I look at, I say, My God, what's going on? What's going on? I'm crying out for people at night time. I say, God, what's going on? I can't sleep because I'm crying for the nations. I can't help it because people are dying everywhere. Am I scared? No, I'm not. Am I fearful? No, I'm not. But I see it and it's real. Beautiful young ladies, beautiful babies, beautiful children, beautiful men, older, elderly men. My God, my God. But God is saying that he is what you need right now in this time. He is what you need. He's risen from the dead because of these times, the hard times, the hardships, the things that we're going through. God is here for us. And all he wants us to do is cry out, get back on our knees, go back to the first love. Jesus Christ is our first love. That's why the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When he got on that cross and he said, my God, Father, I've taken everything. By your stripes I am healed. I was bruised for your iniquities. My God, he went through all of this and he just said, Father, it is finished. My God, it's finished. Okay, this is telling you right here, right here in Psalms 91. People may fall in front of you. You are in the midst. It's hurting you because we are human beings. We are human beings and spiritual. So we're watching and we are hurt by what's going on. I feel the hurt. I'm looking around and say, God, I'm sleeping at night. Every time I'm sleeping at night, I say, God, what's going on? I'm crying out for the nations. It's a war cry in my spirit. I'm constantly saying in the middle of the night, three, four in the morning, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Because it's God speaking through my spirit, man. And he, what he's saying is that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord right now in this time. This is what the nations are doing. They are beginning to cry out. Everybody's beginning to say, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess, Lord, you are Christ. 
You are Christ. There's nothing else above you. There's nothing else beside you. There's nothing else underneath you. There is no idol more important than you. You are God. You are everything. You are alive. You are real. That's what God is wanting people to know and wanting people to see. My God, my God, my God. Psalms 91. My God. Hmm. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you. He will command his angels concerning you people, me, us. He will command his angels. His word is going to come forth and those angels are going to come flopping, flopping, zoom, right to you. He's going to command his angels concerning you. We're little people. We're one, we're one, we're one. We're thousands, we're many, but we're just we're little individuals. But he will command his angels concerning one individual, you. God will do it with his word. It will come forth and he will command them concerning you. That's how important you are. That's why when he laid on that cross and said, it is finished yet again, he said it for a reason. Because just one person, if just one soul could be saved, he did it concerning you. My God. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To guard you in all your ways and everything that you do. They will lift up, it will lift you up in their hands. My God. The angels will lift you up in their hands once he commands the angels so that you will not strike your foot against any stone. You will not be harmed. That's what I mean. You won't be touched and you won't be harmed in the name of Jesus. My God. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Amen. Under your feet, you guys. Under your feet. Because he loves you, says the Lord. God says the Lord. He loves you. He loves me. He loves us. Even in this dark time with the cloud just, just whoom, whoom, whirlwind of clouds just following the death, the death, okay? The angel of death just coming around. He is still concerned about you. Still concerned about you, me, and us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He knows the name above every name. Jesus, Almighty Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sh Shiloh, Jehovah Nis Nisi, my banner, my strong tower, my God. Because he knows, by God, I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. With long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, even in this time, you guys, with long life, I will satisfy him. That means it's going to make you happy. Satisfaction means you're happy. That's why every business that operates, they say satisfaction guaranteed because all they want is their customers to be satisfied. Well, let's just say God is our store clerk and he wants his customers to be satisfied. So he will give you satisfaction and show you his salvation. I will show him salvation. I will save him. Salvation means to be saved. I will show him salvation and I will keep him satisfied. Even in this time of famine, this time of pestilence, this time of wickedness, this time of whatever is going on, okay? People are robbing, they're stealing, they're doing all kinds of stuff that they shouldn't be doing right now. But people are hurting and people are dying, falling by the wayside. But guess what? I will still rescue him. I will still show him my salvation. I will still answer him in this time of trouble. I will honor him because he knows and he acknowledges my name. The name above every name. My God, that's powerful. That is truly powerful in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I just lift you up and I praise your holy name and I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for what you're doing on today. I thank you that you have risen up. I thank you that you died. I thank you that you died on the cross at Revival, but you risen up on the third day, the day that represents Easter, the national holiday. Yes, it's not about the holiday, but it is in the spiritual realm because at the end of the day, spiritually, what God is saying is, I took it all at the cross. And on the third day, I rose up. I rose up after I told my father, it's done. I've done it all. Lord God, I took everything that you wanted me to take, all the iniquities, all the transgressions, everything, but each and every soul that is to come, each and every soul that has died, I've taken it all. So now he's just saying, I've risen. And what God is calling you to do is to rise up the same way. That's why they call people Christians, because they're supposed to be Christ-like. So what do you do? The same way Jesus died, representational, and he rose back up, Okay, we need to die to our flesh and raise back up spiritually 
That's what we need to do. Raise up, die to the flesh, and raise back up spiritually. It doesn't mean your body needs to die, but what it means is put the flesh under subjection, which is a spiritual death, and raise up spiritually and wake up in Christ Jesus. Be risen, just like on today. If you have not been raised, if you've been, you've been laying spiritually in the dry bones valley, guess what? Today, make today your day of rising up. Make today your day of elevation. Make today your day that the Lord has called you and lifted you up and said, God, I'm tired, I'm finished. My uncle's dying, my aunt's dying, my mom's dying, my sister's dying, my brother's dying, my kids aren't dying. I'm dying, whether it's spiritually or physically, but God, raise me up. Raise me up today in the name of Jesus. Lift me up, Lord God. Command your angels concerning me. Let them hold me in their hands, Lord God, so that my feet does not get hurt. I will not hit a piece of stone. Nothing will come near me. No pestilence, no disease, no corona, no nothing. Because God is going to concern his angels, have his angels come to you and minister unto you and carry you because you are important to Christ Jesus. That's why he died on the cross, because we are of importance to him. One little person, one being, one tiny little baby, even a premature little baby that weighs one pound or two pounds. Everybody is important. A soul is important to Christ Jesus. My God, God is willing and is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for raising up on today, spiritually, in Jesus' name, for, for commanding your angels concerning me, for commanding your angels concerning everybody that's right now going through this time of trouble in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise in the name of Jesus. My God, you said every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Well, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you. And I want to bow down and confess that Jesus Christ is God. My God, my God, my God. My Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. My God, thank you, Lord. My God. John 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? This is what God is asking us. Do we believe that if we believe in him that we will never die? We shall never die, amen? This is the spiritual question that God is asking you. Do you believe that because he has resurrection and he has life and he lives even though we will die, just like he died, whoever believes will never die. Do you believe this? This is the question that God is asking. Do you believe this? Even when death is surrounding you, do you believe that if you have God, if you have life of God, Jesus Christ, the spiritual being, the Holy Ghost in you, that you will never die? My God, powerful question. It is a very powerful question. My God, my God, my God. Mm. My Jesus, hallelujah. Luke chapter 24, verse 6 and 7 says, He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners. My God. Be crucified on the third day he will raise again. That's what he was delivered onto the hands of the sinners. Mere mortal beings. Because he was a mere mortal being at the time, but with the spirit of God all over him, the glory of God all over him, just to do the perfect will of his father, just stayed inside his fleshly body without sin, okay, walked the earth, dealt with every single thing, bullying and everything that he did not deserve for us. He was handed over to the sinners, okay? And guess what? He died and rose up again on the cross. That's what it represents today. And not only does it represent that, but it represents us. 